everyone, this is Gail, and I don't know about you, but I want to show you, I mean, I have accumulated so much scrap. I've got bowls of scrap. I don't know what you do with yours. I'm very frugal, and I don't get rid of anything. So this one I don't have room for. But anyway... I wanted to show you something that I have done with scrap that I really have enjoyed and you can really come up with some beautiful things but the only other thing you need other than lots of scrap or maybe some old canes maybe I'll get rid of some of my old canes also is some black clay rolled out very very thin and this is rolled out, well this is rolled out to a number six. I could have gone thinner, but I figured I would stop at number six. And I'm going to trim it in half, because I really don't want it that big. I cut my paper. My, my blade's not that sharp, but evidently sharp enough to cut this plastic dally wrap. I'm going to start with this one. And I'm going to keep my other clay there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do a stropel cane. And I'm sure there are other ways to do it. Uh, I met Alice Stropel in Florida at a Fandango and thoroughly enjoyed, you know, her class. And this, she didn't teach how to do this, but um, I just wanted to show you, and I'm going to cut... Well, I don't want to cut it since this is very thin. Cutting, oh, I'll do it anyway. Maybe I'll cut this way instead of slicing. Maybe that way it won't cut my paper. But she was like the rest of us, had developed a lot of scrap clay. Didn't know exactly what to do with it, so she started playing. And she came up with this, what we have always called the Stropel Cane named in her honor and I'm sure there are other versions but I like to give Alice credit where credit is due but there are different things here different pieces of scrap this is a part of a Bargello cane that I had and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on the black clay doesn't have to be in any particular order Matter of fact, you can drop little pieces if you want. And find something else that looks interesting. That looks kind of interesting. See, that's just some scrap clay that I put together. So I think I'll sli take some slices of this. And I'm just going to lay it on here. What I'm going to try to do is fill in some of the, the black space with things that I happen to have just laying around. I'm going to turn this this way because, and I don't like, again, there's a piece that fell off. Let me get out some of my canes. These are things I will probably never use. They were uh, made for a reason, and they've been sitting for like 15 years, so I think it's time that we do something with these and I'm just going to roll them mainly because they've been sitting for so long and they need to get warmed up and conditioned and that's just a good way to do it. This is just a swirl cane but that's not going to matter because we're not going to see that part. But I'm going to cut, take this and just make it a little bit, oh, well actually a lot longer. But what I'm looking for is a fairly skinny piece and I'll just start cutting here and I'm going to lay them this way across my black clay and just keep slicing and like I say there's no rhyme or reason to this you just kind of put things where you want them or if you don't even know if you want them there just slap them on here somewhere 
it's going to be rather interesting when we get to the end of this to see how this plays out. And there's an extra one, but I'll save that for the next layer. Yes, I said the next layer. Let's see. Here's some pink that I really need to roll out a little thinner. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a patch there and I'm going to put this because this cane is going to th this end here looking this way is going to be the face of your cane so I want that pink to go all the way through and let's see what else have I got here's some silver and I probably don't need this much so let me I'm going to do the same thing with this roll of silver that I did with the cane Maybe I'll roll it and then flatten it out. Oh, there's air in there. Good thing I wasn't. Maybe that's why it was in my scrap, because I knew it had air in it. So rather than roll it, I'm going to pinch it, make sure all the air is out, and maybe just flatten it out a little bit. And use my roller to lengthen it. And I think I'll put this on here. Let me move this piece of blue. And put a piece of silver. But you just keep doing this with different things. Here's some scrap from a static cane that I made. And I'll just flatten that out. So like I say, you're going to be getting this from the side, so it doesn't matter if you mess up your design. And I'll probably cut this into pieces. I'll put a piece here. The idea is to try to fill in most of your black. You don't have to cover all of your black. Let's see, since that's got a gap in it, I'll put that there. I'll just keep finding blue. I'm just going to keep adding blue over here in the same place. And let's see, I'll just kind of stick that in there. And I'll put something in here. Let me just get this because it was on my table. All right, so that's okay. So now I'm going to take this thin clay that I cut off. I'm going to lay it on top, and I'm going to lay it and kind of press as I do this so that we don't get it as, you know, as little air in here as possible. And it cuts off right there. And this cuts off right there. But... If you want, you can even press this way with your fingers just to try to press out any air that might be trapped in there. Because we do know that air is not our friend. So then we do it all over again. Let me see what other little cane might be in here. This one's interesting, but rather than roll it, I'm going to just slice this one. Slice that edge off and slice this edge off. And look at that. Isn't that neat looking? So I think I'll put that in this little area where there seems to be a groove. And there's a groove pretty big groove here. I'll fill that in. And this is, like I said, there's no rhyme nor reason. You just stick your scrap clay on here. And let's see. I've got so much scrap in this bowl, it's hard for me to even see what I've got. Okay, there's a thin piece. I'll just kind of stick that there. And put one behind it. Just so, even though the design will be off a little bit, it's still going to be a similar design. 
And you're, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. As long as my stripes are going in the same direction, I don't really care about the rest. See if I can find any more little sheets before I start adding other stuff. There's one there, but I think it's pretty... Oh, no, it came off. Alright, and let me see. I'm just going to take this. It's all stuck together. I'm going to try to get this yellow green. And if there's blue on it, it doesn't matter. I think I'll put that in here. And maybe fill in this end there. I don't know. I don't know that I want to mess that up. Oh, here's this. This will be fun. Let me separate that. And let me cut it. And I'll put that in this groove here. And here's another one. Anyway, you just play. And... You don't have to fill every one of them up, but I need some color down here. Let me see. Oh, this is interesting. This is a a fern cane or part of a fern cane. Um, let me see if I can slice this. I don't know how successful I'll be. See, that's how much of it I cut off. And I'm just going to, I'll even thin this out just so it won't be quite so thick. And I'll put this over here. And I'll just stick this on here somewhere. And that seems to be pretty covered. So I have some more clay over here. Let me see. I'll cut this wide. I'll just lay, lay it on top because this is just an experiment, right? See, I told you my blade wasn't sharp because I just used it with my finger. Anyway, you take another piece of black and lay it across the top. I didn't cut that quite wide enough. But I've got my scraps over here from the last one. I'll just fill in some spaces because this is all scrap except for the black. So it doesn't really matter. But I just like to separate the colors. But you keep doing this, you keep layering and layering and layering. The only thing is you do, it is good to separate your color or your rose by color, but it's going to give really an interesting effect. For those of you that have never seen one, you're going to love it. So let's go again. Let's see, what else have I got? I've got this. That might like look good squashed. It's a spiral cane. So running out of space here but I am working on my clay space um, in the process of moving all of my paper goods into another room which means I can spread out in this room and have more room for my clay I can get rid of a lot of this clutter so that I'll have more workspace here so that'll be nice let me see. I'm going to look at this from the end. And I think I'm going to cut this in half. Since I don't have any really big blobs of color, 
on any of the other rows. And here's this cane I had left over. I think I'll just stick that in there now. And let me flatten this out a little bit more. You can tell by the way it's cracking, it's not very conditioned. Again, these have been sitting for a long, long time. I got into this mode where I, I loved making canes and I didn't know what to do with them after I made them. So I've got lots of these little extra canes that pretty are pretty much useless. I was just learning a process. Even though that looks black, I know there's color inside, but I don't have to worry about um, covering that part. Here's some black and white stripes. I'll just press those in there. See if I have any more to go back so I can go back a little further. See, it's just this is just a good way to get rid of your scrap. Whoops, that's going the wrong way. But it doesn't really matter. And let's see, what else can I stick in here? I can just take these and this is a yellow, a white to yellow Skinner blend that this I cut the end off. Yellow will brighten this up a little bit. I'm afraid to pull on this too much because, like I said, well, these the scrap up here has been used recently. But I think I'll put that right in there. But the idea is just to keep building layer after layer after layer after layer. And it's just, you can make it as thick as you want, but just remember that how whatever the height is, is going to be the um, size of your cane. So you want enough to work with. Let's see, where did I put those others? I don't remember. I think I'll just stick this in here. Cut this black off because I really don't need that much black. Black on top of black. And I'll stick this in here. And just keep slicing this till I get enough to go all the way through to the other end. But you just play. And we all like to play. Even as adults, we like to play. But there's a green there. Let me see what else I can find in my scrap. See, I've got so much stuff. Here's a kaleidoscope cane. Some thin end slices. I'm going to put that there. And if you would rather stick with just one particular color family, you can do that. I like to mix them up because it's amazing how these go together. And here's some more of this Bargello. And I'll just stick down here. That'll add some variety when this thing gets sliced. Um, let's see. Just going back into my little stash here. Here's a little cane that, again, it's another swirl. I got into these swirls because there was a time I was making a lot of flowers and I needed flower centers. So I just started mixing up things for flower centers. Matter of fact, that's what this, see this is, flower centers. And they're just little strange. Here's a white spiral. 
although I still use those, but I will, again, it's black on black. But it's going to really look cute. Let's see, this, you know, you clean out your, oh, this got some sparkle in it. But you can clean out your scrap pile. Just pick out anything that looks interesting, or even if it doesn't, you never know. I'm going to cut this in, on the right side of my blade. Can you see the sparkle? Maybe not. But this has got glitter in it. I don't know what I was making when I was doing this, but it's just a mishmash of color. But that's what we're doing is a mishmash of color. And I'll just put these in here. Then I think it'll be time for another layer of black. Didn't cut these wide enough. Although I think I started out with a thinner sheet and I just kind of built up as we went along. And after I do this layer, I will pause the camp pause the filming because you really don't need to see me do this which could be an hour or so and I may need to roll some more black clay and I think that's what I'll do I think I'll pause right now and just add some more layers and when I'm ready to get it built up, I will be back. Or actually, okay, I've got these layered up now. And you notice I finished with a color top, not a black cover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this in half this way. And move this to the top of that. And now you might want to trim these ends a little bit. Just get rid of some of the weird little ends that are sticking out. doesn't really matter. But it's just going to be easier for me to work with it. And I'll do the same here on the front. Some of these ends that are poking out. And you just press. And what I would do now is put a piece of black on top of this so that your top and your bottom is black. So I'll just and then you starting in the center press out so you get all that air out. And just press and press. If you want to reduce it, you can reduce it. That's that leaf, that fern leaf. It's not very conditioned. It wants to crack on me. I'm just going to compress it a little bit. And I'm going to take a slice. And look what you've got. Now this is pretty big. Some of my most a lot of times I press this until it gets even thinner, which might be a fun thing to do. You can press this, but see even though you've got some of the same components in here, they're in different spaces. They're, they're staggered throughout your cane. And you can use these to do um, 
Oh, you could do mosaic, not mosaic, kaleidoscope canes if you wanted. You could um, <coughs> stack this again. Well, I would compress it pretty good first. Let's compress it and make this a little bit smaller so that these components are even smaller. You can roll it with your roller. I should have watched Alice's channel. If you haven't, she does have some YouTube videos as well as some websites. I'm not sure. I haven't looked her up in a long time. But it would be very interesting if you wanted to look her up and see some of the things that she does with her stropel canes. I'm going to go upstairs and get a picture that I made out of scrap canes and stropel canes. And I ended up making a landscape. And that's something I may do in the future, but keep falling off my roller here. You see, that's compressed quite a bit, and it makes it not look quite so um, regimented. But again, if you want, and you can go this way, or you can go this way, depending on how big you want your canes, uh, you can cut and stack again. Let's do it one more time this way. And just continue compressing. Look at that side. Isn't that pretty? That's on the long side. This is the actual Stropel cane. But again, compress. Roll with your roller. You just want to compress it until you're happy with it. You know, you might be happy with it the way it is. I like to get mine to where the color thicknesses are really thin. Of course, I didn't put very thin pieces on here because I was trying to show you how to do it. And I like to flip it over and do the same thing on both sides. Because remember, some of this clay that's in here is not conditioned, so you want to make sure it all gets to the same temperature. And that looks like a little bit of air. I couldn't tell if it was a bump, but that's a little bit of air. Just poke it with the needle tool and then press it out. So this was the first slice. Now let's see what, what it looks like now. Look at that. Isn't that wild looking? That is really cool. And these down here are not as compressed as the rest, so I will probably roll on this side for a bit. just to get that layer compressed. And you can cut and stack again if you want. There's, you know, it's no rhyme or reason to this. That's one thing I like about this type of cane, is you do whatever you want. And that might be enough. So I think I will cut this way. But before I put them together, I want to show you the difference. All right, that's the middle of the cane. This is the end of the cane. See the difference? Because you never know what it's going to look like. But I'm going to just take that and put it on top. I might flip it over because it's shaped better to fit that way. 
And then I can press this together. And then I can just, you know, use this in my landscapes. Or, whoops, that wasn't even a full slice. I guess if I got it off my plastic wrap and onto a surface where it'll stick, it would be even better. But there we go. With that, is that not cool? But that is a Stropel cane. Now I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to go get my picture. It's upstairs in my bedroom. But just imagine, you could do anything with this. You could make a bracelet out of this. You could cut slices and just put them up next to each other and make a gorgeous bracelet, which is what I might do. But it starts this way, then it compresses down to this, then it compresses down to this. You just keep compressing and then cutting and stacking. So I'll be right back to show you my other picture. Okay, here you go. I'll try to get it all in. This is a picture that I did, and I can't get it far enough away from the camera to get so that you can see it all. Let me move some of my scrap, and maybe I can get it a little bit closer. But this is my thing, and see, he, these are all Stropel canes that I sliced and used as a hillside. This is very abstract, as you can tell. Then I cut cane slices. I had leaf canes. I had flower canes. Here's the fern cane. You know, just different things here. I did a brown and black and gold and red Stropel cane for the trunk of this tree. And then I did specific colors. Still got a bowl of scrap over here. I did specific colors like these are yellows and light greens and some white, some ecru. These are all Stropel canes. This one was the reds and pinks. And you can see bits of color that are mixed in there because it's scrap. It doesn't matter. And then the top layer, I use blues and purples with a little bit of white that was in a cane or whatever. And then the, the tree itself is just uh, some sliced flower canes that I had. But this is what I did. Oh, it's been <coughs> years ago. And what I did is I bought this frame. It's just a cheap frame. I got it Michael's probably. And it had this hard, uh, I don't know if it's masonite or if it's just a heavy chipboard. But it had a real, you can hear it, real hard backing. So I took this out and used that as the base for my painting. And then just added clay, you know, started down here, and I did the background first. I knew I wanted a hillside and grass, and then the, like, I was thinking sunset with the yellow, the red, and then the blue and purple. And then I just added the tree and the flowers and the leaves and all of these on top of my base layer. But that's what I did with my Stropel canes. This one just had a lot of pinks and purples and but see, if you look at it closely, which is the interesting part, there's some of the little black and white striped canes in here. Um, here's a pink and white striped cane. There's no telling what that was, but the, it's all through there. Um, just different canes I had and different scraps, and I just laid it in there. So this is one of the things you can do with your Stropel canes, and I hope you would all give it a try. It is so much fun. It's a good stress reliever because there's no rules. You don't have to worry about, did I do this right? Did I do that right? It is just fun. And matter of fact, I have got a box up here of Stropel canes, and I'll put this in the box. And then when I'm ready to make something, I'll have all of these to draw from. So I hope you like that. Uh, I have a good time with them. But I will be back again next week with another polymer clay video. Bye-bye.